In this foreign exchange lesson, I'm going to give you a very quick, short and sweet introduction to how foreign exchange and foreign currencies work. Guys, this is overly simplified, but it is very important for you to understand these basics before we progress to the really mind-blowing stuff. The definitions that you have to look at is the foreign exchange rate is the price of one currency in terms of another. You need to know that we distinguish between the direct quotation, where we represent the foreign currency as one unit to determine how much of our local currency has to be given or converted into one of the foreign currency. Or we have the indirect quotation, where we give our local currency as one unit to determine for one of our local currency, how much of the foreign currency can we obtain? And the Forex market is the place where we go to buy or sell foreign exchange. Important for you to remember that a currency is the legal tender used only in the country of origin. We know American dollars are really worth more than the South African Rand, but your $2 it's not going to get you very far when you go to pick and pay to buy a bread. They are just not going to accept it regardless of how much it is worth because we do not use the American dollar to trade in South Africa. A trade block sometimes uses a single currency, for example, the European Union who uses the euro. And then we use the US dollar as a base currency in order to make references or in order to make comparisons. The demand and supply of currencies originate from either imports and exports, which represents a flow nature, and this will cause gradual changes in foreign exchange or the foreign exchange rate. Compared to investments, which is of stock nature, and this can cause abrupt changes because our foreign speculators cause what they anticipate. If they predict South Africa is going to experience an economic crisis, everybody who invested here is going to extract their investments and this will cause the depreciation of the rand. Now, what determines the value of any given currency? Foreign exchange has exactly the same demand and supply curve as any other product or service. So when you get a graph relating to foreign exchange, it is very important to take note of the following. Are we talking about the foreign currency here or are we talking about the local currency? Now this graph represents the demand and supply of dollars. So we are talking about the foreign currency over here. Secondly, we want to determine how much of our local currency do we have to give in order to obtain one dollar. So therefore this graph also represents the direct quotation. Next, we have to determine who supplies this foreign currency. Now obviously we know that America is the country that uses the US dollar, so they are the ones supplying the US dollar. In order for us to import goods, such as movies or computer programs or any other good or service from America, we need dollars to pay for it because the Americans can't do anything with our rands. They have no use for our rand. So on the Forex market, we are going to demand dollars. Now we can determine how much we have to pay in order to obtain a certain quantity of dollars. The equilibrium position indicates that we have to pay X rands in order to get $1 at the given quantity that we need in order to meet our import demand. We can basically sum up the nature of demand and supply for foreign currency like this. Locals demand dollars, South Africans demand dollars, while Americans supply dollars. South Africans demand dollars, Americans supply dollars. Why do we want dollars? Because we want to pay for imports, we want to buy shares in American firms, we want to buy other American assets. Maybe we have South Africans wishing to visit 
the USA. And then they have to convert their hands into dollars to go and pay for their accommodation or their food or to do sightseeing over there. Maybe we place a deposit with an American bank, pay interest or dividends to American individuals or firms who invested in South African assets, or we repay debt borrowed from America. Why would America supply us with dollars? Maybe to pay for exports from South Africa. Maybe they want to buy shares in South African firms. Maybe they want to buy South African assets. Maybe Americans want to come and visit South Africa, place a deposit with a South African bank, repay interest or dividends to South Africans, or repay any debt that they have borrowed from South Africa. It is very important for you to understand that we can replace the word dollar with any other currency used throughout the world. For example, the Japanese yen, the Thai baht, or maybe even the Zimbabwean dollar. How does appreciation and depreciation work? The appreciation of a country's currency is an increase in the price of the currency in terms of another currency. And this happens due to the market forces of demand and supply. So when the dollar goes from nine rand to one dollar, to 10 rand to one dollar, the dollar appreciated. Because now we have to give them more rands for the same dollar. But let's move away from money just a second and pretend America wants to buy cookies from us. If the dollar appreciates, it means that for one dollar, they no longer get nine cookies. We have to give them 10. They therefore get more value for their money. And at the same time, our cookies became worth less because now we have to give 10 cookies where we previously only gave nine. Now the depreciation of a currency. Is the price of a currency in terms of another country's currency also due to the market forces of demand and supply where the dollar goes from nine rand to eight rand? In other words, where we usually gave them nine cookies, now they only get eight. They got less cookies for the same dollar. So what are the factors that will affect the demand and supply of foreign exchange? First of all, we look at the income of the citizens of a country because income determines how much you can spend. Then we look at people's individual tastes and habits because this will determine why they decide to buy one item and not another. For example, why they're going to buy an imported product instead of a locally produced item. Then we look at the price level of goods and services. This will determine whether people buy local or imported goods. Think how individuals choose to buy a cheaper imported good than an expensive locally produced good. And then last but not least, we look at interest rates because people invest there where they can get a better return on their investment or money. So if interest rates are high, foreigners might decide to invest their money in the country with the high interest rate and not in their local banks. Now I want to demonstrate foreign exchange by means of a circular flow diagram because it's the easiest comparison to make. An economy is in equilibrium when there are no leakages and no injections or where leakages are equal to injections. This means that households earn an income for their factors of production. They use all of their income to spend at firms. And then firms use all of their income to pay the factors of production. And we all know it doesn't work like that. So when households or businesses import goods or services from the foreign sector, we demand a foreign currency in order to purchase these goods or services. We need to supply them with our local currency, the RAND, and this will be converted into US dollars on the Forex market. An increase in the demand for foreign currency means that we are spending our money from our economy elsewhere 
in the global economy. In other words, for us to import, a leakage occurs. The money flows out of our circular flow, and this will depreciate the value of our currency. What happens when households or businesses export their goods or services to the foreign sector? Now, the foreign sector will have to convert their currency into rands on the forex market. The dollar is going to be converted into rands and now they can pay for our goods or services. This increase in the supply of money into our circular flow is an injection into our economy and this will lead to an appreciation of our currency. So here is a brief summary. An increase in the demand for dollars will depreciate our currency because of the leakage taking place. A decrease in the demand for foreign currency will appreciate our currency because the money will flow in our circular flow and not leave. An increase in the supply of foreign currency will appreciate our currency because of all of the injections, while a decrease in the supply of foreign currency means we have less money circulating within our circular flow, which will depreciate our currency. If we represent it graphically, I want to make you attend on the following. The green represents the local currency, while the red represents the foreign currency. Who, who supplies the foreign currency? Who demands the foreign currency? When there is an increase in the demand for foreign currency, it means it is a leakage, and this will depreciate our currency because we now have to pay more for our foreign currency to obtain it. Whereas a decrease in the demand for foreign currency illustrates the fact that no leakage takes place, so the money is spent within the borders of our economy. This will appreciate our currency. It becomes cheaper for us to obtain the foreign currency. Where we originally paid 1p for the foreign currency, we now only pay 0.75p. From the other point of view, an increase in the supply of foreign currency represents an injection into our local economy. And this will appreciate our currency. It becomes cheaper for us to obtain the foreign currency, where a decrease in the supply of a foreign currency means that the foreign countries don't inject their currency into our economy anymore. And this will depreciate our local currency as it becomes more expensive to obtain the foreign currency. So I hope this gave you a broad overview and an understanding of how foreign currencies work. If there's anything you struggle with, just rewind, go back, look at it again, make sure you understand the concepts because in the next video, I'm going to blow your mind.